In today's video lesson, we will be tackling a JavaScript topic at the World of Webcraft forums. First, we'll take a peek at the forum topic. Second, we'll quickly take a look at the finished tutorial example made to answer the topic. And then we'll begin the lesson. Okay, Carl writes, Hi all, say you had an image like this and it was a GIF or PNG so the white was transparent. How would you put an image of a website behind it so it looks like it's on the screen and change the image every five seconds using JavaScript? Don't really want to use jQuery if I can help it. Now, so I just told Carl that uh, it'd be nice if I could do this tutorial on video so it would reach a wider group. And he said, okay, that's cool. So that's why we're going ahead with it now. So we're making something in JavaScript that's going to put images on this screen like it was a TV. And they'll change every five seconds. Now let's take a look at the finished product of the little example application that we created. You can see that in a div we are laying in our TV graphics and then inside of that div we have another div that's positioned with CSS in such a way to where it looks like it is the screen and I made it the exact dimensions it should be to fit in as the screen and I just gave it a little bit of margin and padding to make everything fit in there just right using CSS then what I did was use JavaScript to put contents of uh, images the inner HTML property of that div. And I set up a little timer for every three seconds in this example, but you can set it to five seconds, ten seconds, twenty seconds, or half a second if you want. Now let's explain the code. All right, within this application, we have our style tag here in the head tag of the document, which has the styling for our TV and our TV screen divs. So you can see in the body section of the page I have one div with an ID of my TV. Then I have another div nested right inside of that first div and that one has an ID of my screen. So my TV holds the whole graphics for your TV and then my screen is just to section off the screen part of the TV graphics. Now what we do is we use CSS here and I'll show you that right now for targeting the my tv and my screen divs and applying css to position the little square or the rectangle that's going to be just the screen exactly where it needs to go so what you do is you set the width and the height according to your tv graphics dimensions and then you set the width and height for your tv screen that you want laid inside of the tv to be the screen part now the border, we don't need any border, so let me just remove that. And you can have a border attribute here on my screen. Make it dashed in some bright color if you want to see exactly where that screen is positioned in there. But really, you'll know where it is according to where your images show up. Now the margin left you see here on the screen is to bring it off of the edge of the TV graphics a little so it fits right in the screen area where it should. And the padding top that you see here on the My TV graphics is to allow uh, pushing down padding on the top of that div to push down the screen a little bit to where it's not on the top of the graphics and it's laid right in the screen area where it should be. So you can adjust the padding top and the margin left to move the little box that is the screen inside of the TV graphics anywhere it needs to go to exact pixel locations. And you can see I changed my height a little bit to offset the padding top. So I just minus 20 pixels, I subtracted 20 pixels from this should be 184 pixels. So I subtracted my padding top amount of pixels from my height of my div. That way everything was exactly the way it should be. And finally of course we put the background image of screen.jpg in the my TV div which is the main div that holds your TV graphics, the whole TV. And remember inside of that we have another div called my screen. Now we can talk about the JavaScript since you fully understand the CSS and the HTML that's happening there. Okay, now I'm going to collapse up the CSS. And we're going to talk about the JavaScript now. You can see that my JavaScript tag is positioned under my HTML elements in the page. This is not in the head tag. And you can adjust my JavaScript a little bit, maybe put it into an on load event for the page. And then that way you can have it up in the head tag. But since it's not in an onload event yet, and I just wanted to make a quick example for you, I just stuck the script tag 
under the HTML elements and this is acceptable and it validates so everything's cool about the way it runs just like I programmed it. Alright now let's open up this JavaScript block here and explain it a little bit. Okay, in the first line we create a variable called my screen and that's equal to document dot get element by ID my screen that way we can adjust its inner HTML property very easily or any other things that we want to do to it within this little script so my screen remember that's the div that's inside of the TV div now my pics is a variable that is an array it's an array of information and you can put as many pieces of information that you like within this array this array just happens to hold pictures names of pictures and these can be GIFs or PNGs or JPEGs, whatever you want, and just put the picture name right there along with its extension. And you separate each by comma, and you can see that each is encapsulated by single quotes. Like I said, you could put 40 pictures in there if you want, and the script will still perform the same way because I set it up to be dynamic. So the next variable that we create within this application is called total pics, and that's going to hold a number for how many total pics that you've placed into this array so if you place 10 pictures into this array that means this variable total pics is going to be equal to 10 because we access the length property of our pics array okay next variable we have is called i and i is also a number and that's equal to 0 when the script first begins now within this loop i is going to iterate right here in this line i plus plus that's an iteration of this i variable that will make it uh, iterate by one it'll increase by one each time this loop passes so the first loop pass it's going to be a zero the second loop pass it'll be a one then a third two and so on and so forth and we set up this i iterator within the loop just to make sure that our loop will never try to access an image that's not in the array by never going beyond the array boundaries we use this total picks. Remember, we use total picks to evaluate to see if we've gone past that amount in the array. We want to make sure we bring the i back to zero. That way, when when it gets to the end of our this loop, when it gets to the end of our array, it doesn't keep trying to select items that aren't there in the array. It goes back to zero, which is the first item within the array. All arrays start with an index of zero. So this item in the array is 0, this item is 1, this item is 2. That's its index number within the array because all arrays start with an index by default of 0. So now let's explain this function called loop, which is really the magic of the little application. This loop is what allows it to swap out automatically new pictures every 5 seconds. Now this first little bit within the loop is a simple if condition that evaluates if i is greater than total picks minus one and the only reason I have minus one in there is because total picks is not going to really represent the index number amounts in there because if you have for instance if I have three images right here my top index number in this array is going to be two not three because all array indexes default start with zero so this would have an index number within that array of 2. So that's why I put total picks minus 1. So if you have 10 picks in there, you want total picks minus 1 here to make it 9. So for instance, if i is 10, you don't want that to be because there's no 10th picture. That's why you shift i back to 0 if i is greater than 2. In my case, if you have 10 picks, this will represent a 9, this little equation. So this will read, if i is greater than 9, shift back to 0 so we can start at the first picture again. All right, then we just have three little lines left. Well, really four lines. Now this next line is we simply access the my screen variable that we created here that represents this div in the HTML. And we access its inner HTML property to place some HTML into it. And each time you place new HTML into it using this method, it'll swap out the old HTML that was in it for this new HTML. So all you have to do is put in an image tag each time within the loop. So each three seconds or five seconds, however long you have your intervals programmed in the loop, you pop in new HTML within that div. And I'm just popping in an image tag. 
Now the way I'm getting the particular picture that should properly go in within each pass of the loop is you simply access the my picks array. Remember my picks array right here, and you put I as the index to access because remember I is always changing. It starts at zero and it goes all the way up to the number of total picks that you have within your array. So each time the array passes, remember the first time this is a zero. The second time it'll be a one. Third time it'll be a two. And then that's really the end of my array. Then it'll shift back to zero in my case. And I, it keeps increasing like that by using this line right here, which is I plus plus, which basically means I equals I plus I. And a shorthand for I equals I plus I is I plus plus. It's just a way to increase by one each time the loop passes. Now here we establish the loop timer, which is a mechanism that is holding the set timeout method. And the set timeout method is a timing method in JavaScript, which will allow you to feed in two parameters to it. The first parameter is the function that you want to execute when this timer is finished. And these are milliseconds. This is the amount of time that you want your timer interval to be. So if you wanted 10 seconds, you would replace that 3 with a 10, since those are milliseconds. If you want 1 second, you put 1,000 seconds. I'm going to leave mine as 3. Now, since we have this set timeout method running inside of the loop function, and the function that it's calling is the loop function itself, that is how we set up the looping process. So this function will run and loop on itself every 3 seconds. Now finally, we have a little line of code. It just tells the function to initially run, basically when the page loads. That's all this line is doing, is telling this function to start up. Now once this function starts up, it's not really going to stop because we set it to loop on itself every three seconds. So every three seconds, this function is going to run. The iterator i is going to change. That'll allow us to access a different picture within our array. And we've set up this if condition to make sure that our i variable never exceeds the total pick index within our array. And that's how the whole application works. Okay, Carl, I hope that helps you. And I hope you other guys get a little bit something out of uh, the workflow that we went through. And I'll have this code available at develop PHP underneath my video tutorial, like always. And I'll put the link to the code underneath this video's description. Okay, I hope you guys have a fine day. Bye-bye.